Avian influenza alert. Why H5N1 and H7N9 strains could trigger the next pandemic. Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. We're thrilled to have you here. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our latest videos. Our dedicated production team is hard at work creating engaging and informative content that caters to a wide audience. Watch until the end for the question and answer section. The 1918 influenza pandemic killed more people in 24 weeks than HIV AIDS did in 24 years. Scientists now warn that dangerous bird flu viruses, especially H5N1 and H7N9 strains, could trigger another devastating outbreak worldwide. Bird flu virus has spread alarmingly from birds to humans. The H5N1 strain has infected over 860 people worldwide since its first appearance, and its death rate is more than 50%. The H7N9 strain spreads between species more easily, though it's not as deadly. These traits make both strains a major threat to global health. This video explores the viral traits, spread patterns, and outbreak risks of these dangerous bird flu strains. We explore their genetic structure, how they mutate, and what could help them spread easily between humans. Scientists believe understanding these elements is vital to preparing for and preventing a global pandemic. Avian influenza viruses belong to the influenza virus A genus. They are classified based on two proteins on their surface, hemagglutinin, H, and neuraminidase, N. This classification system gives rise to names like H5N1 and H7N9. These viruses naturally occur in wild waterfowl and can spread to domestic poultry. While less common, Human infections can happen when people come into close contact with infected birds or their environments. H5N1 first gained significant attention in 1997 during an outbreak in Hong Kong. Since then, it has been the subject of intense study and concern. Key features of H5N1. High mortality rate in humans, around 60%. Primarily spreads from birds to humans. Limited human-to-human -human transmission. While H5N1 has not yet acquired the ability to spread easily between humans, its high mortality rate makes it a major concern for a potential pandemic. H7N9 emerged as a human pathogen in 2013 in China. It has since caused several outbreaks, primarily in China. Key features of H7N9. Lower mortality rate than H5N1, but still significant. Can cause severe illness in humans. Limited human-to-human -human transmission. Like H5N1, H7N9 has not yet developed the ability to spread quickly between humans. However, its ability to cause severe illness in humans makes it a concern for public health officials. Avian influenza viruses spread among birds through direct contact with infected birds, contact with contaminated surfaces, airborne transmission. Human infections typically occur through the following direct contact with infected birds, or exposure to environments contaminated with the virus. The main challenge in controlling the spread of avian influenza is its ability to infect wild birds, which can carry the virus over long distances during migration. Each strain's tissue damage patterns reveal vital differences. H, 7N9 prefers respiratory epithelium and nasopharynx-associated lymphoid tissue. The damage affects multiple organs, Lungs, diffuse alveolar damage with interstitial fibrosis. Heart, degeneration of myocytes. Liver, extensive central lobular necrosis. Kidney, acute tubular necrosis. H5N. One infection spread throughout the body with the virus found in the brains and kidneys of all test subjects by day six. H7N9 appeared in the kidneys of about 33% of subjects by day three suggesting different organ involvement patterns. Viral antigens distribution in lung tissue, rather than traditional viral titer measurements, is the strongest indicator of infection severity. This finding shows why understanding tissue-specific viral behavior matters to develop effective treatments. Early detection is crucial in managing avian influenza outbreaks. Warning signs include sudden death in poultry flocks, decreased egg production, soft-shelled or misshapen eggs, swelling around the eyes, neck, and head in birds, purple discoloration of wattles, combs, and legs, 
Global surveillance systems have been established to monitor these signs and quickly detect new outbreaks. These systems involve regular testing of domestic and wild bird populations, monitoring of human cases, genetic analysis of virus samples to track mutations. Controlling avian influenza outbreaks involves a multifaceted approach. Culling infected flocks. When outbreaks occur in domestic poultry, the standard practice is to cull the entire flock to prevent further spread. Biosecurity measures. Farms implement strict hygiene protocols to prevent the introduction of the virus. Vaccination. Some countries use vaccines in poultry to reduce the risk of infection and spread. Movement restrictions. During outbreaks, authorities may restrict the movement of poultry and poultry products. Public education. Raising awareness about the risks and proper handling of poultry is crucial in preventing human infections. The possibility of an avian influenza pandemic remains a concern for several reasons. Genetic reassortment. Influenza viruses can exchange genetic material, potentially creating new strains that combine the high mortality of avian flu with the easy transmission of human flu. Mutation. Avian flu viruses could mutate to become more easily transmissible between humans. Lack of immunity. Humans have little to no pre-existing immunity to avian influenza viruses. Scientists need to analyze multiple risk factors and mathematical models to assess the pandemic potential of avian influenza. A virus's pandemic potential depends on three critical elements. Knowing how to cause human disease, population immunity, and transmission capability. The basic reproductive number, R0, is a vital metric to assess pandemic risk. Research shows H5N1 and H7N9 strains are different. H5N1 R0 equals 0.12, and with H7N9, it is 0.27. Neither virus currently maintains sustained human-to-human -human transmission, as pandemic spread requires an R0 greater than one. However, several factors reduce the likelihood of a pandemic. Improved surveillance. Early detection systems allow for quicker responses to outbreaks. Better preparedness. Many countries have pandemic preparedness plans in place. Advances in vaccine technology. New technologies allow for faster development of vaccines against novel strains. Despite improvements in our ability to detect and respond to avian influenza outbreaks, several challenges remain. Rapid mutation. Influenza viruses mutate quickly, making it difficult to develop long-lasting vaccines. Global travel. The ease and speed of international travel could allow a pandemic strain to spread rapidly. Zoonotic transmission. The continued close contact between humans and animals in many parts of the world provides opportunities for viruses to jump species. Limited healthcare capacity. Many countries lack the healthcare infrastructure to handle a large-scale outbreak. To better prepare for the threat of avian influenza, several areas require further research. Universal flu vaccine. Developing a vaccine that protects against all strains of influenza could provide broad protection against both seasonal and pandemic flu. Improved antiviral treatments. More effective treatments for severe influenza infections could reduce mortality in case of a pandemic. Better understanding of zoonotic transmission. Identifying the factors that allow viruses to jump from animals to humans could help prevent future outbreaks. Enhanced surveillance techniques. Developing more sensitive and widespread surveillance systems could allow for even earlier detection of potential pandemic strains. While the threat of an avian influenza pandemic remains real, our ability to detect, respond to, and potentially prevent such an event has improved significantly. However, continued vigilance, research, and global cooperation are essential to manage this ongoing risk effectively. The emergence of new strains and the evolution of existing ones underscore the need for healthcare professionals to stay informed about avian influenza. By understanding the nature of these viruses, their transmission patterns, and current control measures, we can better prepare for and respond to potential outbreaks. As we move forward, it's crucial to balance the need for preparedness with avoiding unnecessary panic. While the possibility of a pandemic exists, our improved systems and knowledge put us in a better position to face this challenge than ever before. Question one, what is the current threat level of H5N1 and H7N9 avian influenza strains to humans? Answer, 
both H5 N1 and H7 N9 strains pose significant threats to human health. While sporadic severe cases in humans are not unexpected, these viruses have shown alarming adaptability and potential for causing serious illness. H5N1 has a higher pathogenicity, while H7N9 demonstrates enhanced transmission efficiency. Question two, what are the mortality rates associated with H5N1 and H7N9 infections in humans? H5N1 infections have shown a mortality rate exceeding 50% in reported cases. For H7N9, the case fatality rate is approximately 39%. These rates are substantially higher than those of seasonal influenza, underscoring the potential severity of these avian influenza strains. Question three, how do H5N1 and H7N9 viruses typically spread to humans? The primary route of human infection is through close, unprotected contact with infected birds or contaminated environments. Live bird markets present a significant risk with direct handling of infected poultry, exposure to contaminated environments, and contact with infected blood or bodily fluids during food preparation being key risk factors. Question four, is there a risk of these avian influenza strains causing a human pandemic? While neither virus currently maintains sustained human-to-human -human transmission, their genetic plasticity and high case fatality rates warrant continued vigilance. The pandemic potential is determined by factors such as the virus's ability to cause human disease, population immunity, and transmission capability. Current reproductive numbers remain below pandemic thresholds, but ongoing mutation surveillance is crucial. Question five. How are scientists monitoring the evolution of these viruses? Scientists use advanced surveillance systems and predictive modeling approaches to monitor viral evolution. This includes analyzing genomic sequences, tracking mutations in clinical specimens, and employing machine learning models to forecast viral adaptation. Collaborative efforts between multiple agencies and the implementation of the One Health concept have enhanced monitoring capabilities. Thank you for watching our Global RPH production. If you found it enjoyable and informative, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our brand new YouTube channel. Your support helps us grow and continue to provide interesting and valuable content. Stay tuned for more exciting videos.